All right, here we are, here we are. What's going on, DreamCon 2024, day two. We have made it right back into the gaming stage. Of, it's amazing to see everyone already out there competing. I know some amazing gamers in the building, but uh, definitely want to introduce ourselves up here on the main stage of the gaming hall. Uh, first and foremost, I go by the name of Cleo Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Slick Living. This is my third year being here at DreamCon. Every single year it gets bigger and better. And now I get the chance to sit up here not only with uh, my co-host of my podcast, How to Nerd Podcast, but also my family. I love that. I love the fact. Make some noise for the family one time in the building. Yeah, man. So uh, we'll start off at the end down there really quickly. Let's start off at the very end. That's uh, Go ahead, Kadeem. Testing, testing. What's up, y'all? Uh, Kadeem, a.k.a. Kathadius, keeper of games here. Uh, you know, dressed up today as a big, bad snake. Big boss, Metal Gear Solid yeah, 3. Yeah, make some noise for Snake. Shout out to Hideo Kojima. Shout out to Metal Gear Solid Delta coming out soon. Cannot wait. <laughs> Go ahead, Brennan. What up? I'm Brennan, like I said, co-host on the How to Nerd podcast, a.k.a. Bald, brown, and beautiful. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know, I had to work on that. Y'all was making fun of my AKA. You I know like what I'm it. Saying? I like it. Um, but yeah, man, we out here. I'm excited for this. That's right. That's right. Going in, passing it down here. Testing, testing. It's working, right? Yeah, look. look, look. Okay, okay, cool. Um, hi, my name is Kalia Thomas, a.k.a. X underscore KT Creations. I'm the youngest sister of the four controllers. And yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm going to pass it off to this guy over here. I think I know him. Hey, what's <laughs> up, guys? My name is Camille. I go by Mill Mills, and I hope you all enjoying DreamCon. What's up? There it is. There it is, man. Make some noise for the four controllers and the How to Nerd in the building. The first ever cross off. Throw your phones up. Throw your phones up. Throw your phones up. Yeah, man. So we get the chance to do our very first uh, live. No, this is actually our second time doing a How to Nerd podcast live. Yeah. Which I'm really, really excited about, man. There's a podcast in which myself, Brendan Edwards, and a good friend of us who is not here, Roxy Hayes. Unfortunately, Roxy Hayes had to deal with some flight delays, and she was not able to make it. And she's sick. And she got sick. Ooh. And she got sick. So and look, unfortunately. Positive love, energy to her. Hopefully well, she feels soon, better. Roxy. Big love to Roxy. I know, right? Like, but the sickness got her. It got me after our last thing, so I'm happy I'm good now. That is true. But the thing about Roxy is her presence is here no matter what. She has a quote for everyone here. Um, Wait, she has a quote? She has I don't a want quote. To. Roxy's not here. She's sick, but she said, and I quote, tell them to pity me. And the funny part is... I never have any trouble pitying Roxy, so I'm <laughs> I'm literally right in it. Like, no worries, Roxy. All the pity is here for you. We got you. All love, man, always. So uh, we actually get a chance to talk about today's topic, which is, of course, um, gaming psychology and what it means to be a gamer in 2024, considering where we are not only with the ability to access a lot of retro games, but also what the future of gaming is look like. So I just want to give you guys the topic overall, but very quickly, I want to start from uh, down there with Kadeem. We'll work our way back down to Hamil on what you are nerding out about currently. What's the number one thing on your list that you're just, you're, you're gaining all the information about and you're all the way in? Uh, for me, it's gonna be kind of a weird one, but uh, doing a lot of, uh, YouTube videos for uh, just Reddit stories, kind of just seeing how other people's lives are going. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, what's the what's your horror story for working at fast food restaurants, stuff like that? It's it's just a random rabbit hole that I've gone down that I've been nerding out. I mean, again, we nerd out about a lot of things. That's what I'm on right now. I I, I can't explain it. There's nerd stuff everywhere, and if you're going down YouTube rabbit holes of, of other people's oh, horror said, stories, did he say rabbit? You say Reddit or YouTube or both? Both. It's both. All, all three. It's a combination of all of it. You know, nerds don't stop at one spot. All right. It's it's Never Reddit. A it's a it's a Reddit post that's being read on YouTube. That's just rabbit holes of these people's lives. Somebody monetized that channel, by the way, yeah. which is crazy. That's what I'm saying. Someone just literally just was reading someone else's stories on Reddit, from Reddit on their YouTube channel and just making money that way. I feel like there's a legal something there. Could be. You know what I'm saying? What are about? What are you nerding out about currently? All right, you know, so I own a production company in, uh, based out of L.A. That's actually where we produce most of our uh, produce the podcast, How to Nerd. And so lately, actually, I've been nerding out some really, like, nerdy stuff. Like, it's, like, difficult nerd stuff. Like, you know, there's fun nerd stuff, and then there's not fun. So my not fun nerd stuff is, like, what does it take to become a minority co company that a is able to get government contracts? Like, getting Sam.gov and, like, being able to register, do all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of paperwork. It's really boring. But there's supposedly, supposedly a lot of money in it, so I'm out here just like, yo, I'm a nerd out about the things that help me in the way that I do the things that I just like to enjoy as well. Secure the bag, brother. Secure the bag. It's YouTube University in 2024. Kalia, what are we talking about? What are you nerding out about? Currently, 
I'm nerding about uh, some good old wrestling. Some WWE. Yes. Any wrestling you, fans? Yeah. Any wrestling fans? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I've been getting into that. Um, super excited for SummerSlam. I've been keeping track of all the stories. And it's also fun to go back and like watch some of the WWE Legends uh, biographies by uh, AEW. And just hearing some of the stories. And it's like, how is Shawn Michaels alive at this point? <laughs> Respectfully. So it's been fun going through that whole lore and history within the wrestling business. So yeah, that's what I've been nerding about. Can I ask if there's any Joe Henry fans in the crowd? Okay, can say we do it on three? We're, we're, we're going to do it on three. We're going to do it on three. You ready? Say his name and he, he appears. appears. All right, cool. It's out there. Come. It's out there. It's out there. I had to see it in real life. We did an episode on wrestling, and I, I, you know I'm over here just blank face. You have no wrestling. I've never knowledge. seen an episode of He's any wrestling. He's never watched wrestling one day in his life. Never he must baptize him. You're lying. Oh. You must baptize him. I'm wrestling. with you. I don't know. In a sheltered household, first and foremost, and secondarily, as an adult, I haven't had a friend sit me down and be like, yo, this is what you need to watch. I, it's, it's intimidating now. Like, I don't even know where to start. What am I supposed to do? You start on Raw or SmackDown or NXT or any of the amazing pay-per-views we've had for over the last 40 years. You just said a bunch of words I don't understand. A lot of acronyms. Hamil, what are you nerding out about right now, bro? Well, I was kind of out of my nerding out phase for a minute, but I just got back from Evo and definitely nerding out again for the FGC. As you can see, is strong right here. Everyone's getting some sets in. So I'm definitely... Nerding out on some Tekken, Street Fighter 6, Frame Data, everything. That's what I'm on right now. So Shout out to the FGC, another, man. Shout out to the FGC. Trying to win that tournament, bro. Let's get another one. I love it. I love Wait, Cleo, it, Cleo, Cleo, hold on. Before you move on, what are you nerding out on, bro? Oh, I'm yeah. currently nerding out on X-Men stuff. Obviously, Deadpool and Wolverine just came out. Oh. I had to... Uh, yeah. I had to step this. out with a, Look at this. With a Gambit cosplay see one time. Can y'all see, see the purple? Yeah, man. Crazy. I had to step out one time. Big shout out to Brian Hearns, Brian the guy Hearns who made again. my Powerline costume, surprised me with this. So really, really excited. And uh, if you haven't seen the Deadpool vs. Wolverine movie. See a show of hands. Who's seen that who's Deadpool? Seen who's seen the movie? Okay, yeah. Good moment. It is so good. good. It's really okay. good. Okay. It's a love really letter good. to the fans. Okay. Good ass movie. <laughs> you saw it? I did. I did see it. Yeah, he was it was good. It was good. Yeah, we we can't do spoilers, but the three of us going to talk about it. Oh, we have to. So before we really get into the gaming psychology topic, we want to play a really quick game. It's a pop quiz. Okay, it's a pop quiz question, right? So what it is is you have uh, a list of different RPG roles, such as knight, wizard, healer, you know the rest. If you're into RPGs, I know you are. I know you are all the way through, okay? You got to put one of our names. So put everyone's name on the little board here, right? And besides each one of them, here, I'll throw this down to you guys. Tell us who you think that person would be in a game. So, for instance, Roxy, who couldn't be here, but she still made sure to have her presence known, will have pity for her. Pity, pity, pity. Pity for Roxy. She, uh, she sent in a list of what she thinks everyone's RPG role would be. For me, Cleo, she said, an assassin. He doesn't let people know his moves. That's that's pretty that's pretty on brand. I'll take that. Yeah. Brennan would be a monk, uh, be, because he's bald. Of course. <laughs> I feel like you got pleasure from reading that. It I'm just good. saying, like, it felt good. It felt good. It felt good to deliver it in a way that Roxy would deliver it, but it's she nice. would put a little bit more of her emphasis. No, she, she would, would be, like, be doing her because like, you're bald. There you go. Thank you, Cleo. I appreciate you emulating. That's how she would Roxy. Be. Thank okay. you so much. All right. I'm happy you didn't do the laugh. <laughs> uh, Roxy said she would have been a paladin. Uh, which is a holy knight crusading in the name of good, which sounds exactly like her. Yeah. If you know Roxy, you know that is BS. That is a, a lie. lie. BS. That is a that lie. Is a lie. I love Everyone Rox. knows that's BS. Love her to death. That is a <laughs> like, we all, look, make sure y'all put one for Roxy too, all right, y'all? Everyone. Everybody put one for Roxy. Yeah, and no, I went back and did her. I was like, wait a minute. She, Roxy getting a name. Roxy getting in there. All right, and Kadeem, she has a wizard, the ability to make something out of nothing. Take it. That's pretty bad. That's on brand. I'll take it. That's I'll on brand. It. I'll take it. Hamil, you'd be a bard. Okay. You know what a bard is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's, a yeah. bard loves definitely music. A bard. Yes, definitely okay. a bard. I would have right. chose that for myself. It's definitely right. a bard. And uh, Kalia, yeah. you would yeah. be a rogue because you like to do your own heroin things. Yeah. I like to be kind of sneaky with it, you know? I yeah. like that. I respect it. Thank you, Roxy. All right. Uh, for the crowd, very quickly. Which one of you guys? Raise your hand if you would be a warrior. No, no warriors. Oh, we got a warrior back there. Okay, uh, raise your hand if you would be a mage. We got some mages back there. Mages. Okay. Uh, what about if you wanted to be? Where are my assassins at though? Secret would it? 
Okay, I see an assassin. I see you. I see you as an assassin. Okay, all right. Any priests? Any priests? I don't trust the, the assassins. None? No priests? Obviously, it's DreamCon weekend. Ain't nobody trying to be holy around here. Ain't nobody trying to be a holy priest around here. All right, everyone got their things written down? Uh, for the most part? You do it for yourself as well? Yeah, do it for yourself as well. Okay, what, you put Brandon in there? Or? You put Brandon, you put everybody. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. Uh, if there's anybody who wants to be able to tell me why they would be a warrior, a priest, or if they would be a wizard, a mage, a ranger, a druid, shaman, anybody hands, you want to take the mic really fast? Or in the meantime, where everyone's filling out their things? We got one right there. Let's go for it. Um, I would choose to be a mage because, uh, you know, it, like most magic elements is kind of OP. You feel me? And my favorite magic element would probably have to be fire, you know, so you could do like just, just anything your imagination with that fire, you feel me? So, That's right. You know, a set fire. your heart ablaze. <laughs> so, 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 so a mage for you said fire. I love it. What's going on, y'all? I'm uh, Nevelock the Beat Ninja. I, I would consider myself a mage uh, because of the fact that you're putting all these elements together when it comes to magic and with me working with music me and me and a producer you're literally making something out of nothing when you're making beats and stuff so preach respect preach, That's brother real. preach True. preach we got True. one more on this side we're coming over on this yeah, side i was gonna put you what, you thinking of yourself yeah i did this i don't know you. Be? Uh, so um i would probably be a warrior just because in most rpgs oh, i like okay. to smoke i like to just go in there and fighting but if i could do yeah. a secondary class i'd be a paladin a paladin I'd like those magical abilities to help enhance those abilities wait can you tell me what how do you define a paladin what is a paladin to you usually it, it kind of has some of those like ho like holy magic powers usually and like they have more, uh, more beefed up armor and everything and okay more powerful weapons all right I, i'm asking that because i'm looking at the list over here and i'm like i don't know what a paladin is as i'm trying to figure out like look, look the thing is like i said i ain't seen wrestling i'm still here to learn you know what i'm saying all right, is anybody else before we jump into because we're going to start going through how we oh go ahead what you got yeah so i would be a mage as i look at my dream con gaming team because i make things happen hey okay nice. <laughs> the stare down though like that was like that was an intimidating stare so i'd be a mage right <laughs> right <laughs> a lot of mages a lot of mages it one more? Uh, one. one more right here. One more to my boy, Sid. Then we're going to jump into like what we got the four controllers saying. And I'm here is how nice the four controllers are going to be to me because ain't nobody ever nice to me. I'm not a running you. you what you got, brother? Um, I got a good one for you. I would probably be um, an assassin because I move quick. Yep. And um, also secondary mage because I would use a bit of magic. Like uh, the homie said, I love fire. So we'd be doing fire daggers and teleporting and all type of stuff. That's lit. Now, the fun part is what's about to happen now is each one of us are going to talk about what we see each other as as well as what we see ourselves as. So you better have written for, something for yourself. So I'm actually going to, if you don't mind. Go for it. Uh, I'm going to start it over here because I already saw what this man wrote. And I know what he's going to say. We're going to start with you, Brennan. Um, We're going to start with you. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and bring something up like I told you I would. I, go ahead. In case anybody doesn't know, I, I love you first and foremost. You're one of my favorite people in the world. Oh. Um, this man hosted a gaming tournament on all deaf at one point. Yeah. Um, and I, if he wants to bring up what happened on that gaming tournament online, because Roxy was the host as well. Brandon and we is played uh, Super Smash Brothers. And everybody over there is lucky I didn't play in the Smash tournament yesterday. My plane landed too late. Um, but we'll go ahead. Go ahead. What's Brandon, Brandon is particularly very good at Smash, and he will make sure to let you know any chance he gets, anytime anything comes up. Just know the conversation will end up with him talking about him winning, which why I made him a necromancer, since he likes to bring up old shit all the time. Uh, hey! Uh, yeah! I knew he was Get him, Kadeem! Get him, Kadeem! The question that is, is wow. we don't know where we are unless we know where we've been. And he won't stop. Anything that's dead and should be dead, he will bring it back up. I'm <laughs> over oh. it and over. Never lose. If you talk to drunk to me and Never. I beat you, I'm going to keep talking until you beat me. Have I lost? I've seen you lose, though. That one time, that hey, that dude showed up and got you. No, no, that was good. He was good. There you go. Oh, I, I see nobody to lose, y'all. He can't lose. lose. He table. is beatable in Smash. I ain't losing yeah. nobody at this table. What else on the list, Kadima? Okay, let me come down. Obviously, to Cleo. I mean, he's obviously my older brother. Uh, I know how much he loves Batman. So, it's, I mean, Dark Knight was on that list. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, obviously, just Batman and obviously the Bruce Wayne look. Obviously, I'll take it. You know. I'll take that. That's yeah, 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 yeah. That's easy. Being nice to people. Okay. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. I got you. All right. 
Baby sis, Kalia, uh, I put her down as a healer for me. You know, for healer. me personally. You know, Kalia a is a healer. Uh, you know, I'm around her. You know, if anything I'm going throughout the day, she can always just t tend to heal, heal, heal what's going on in my life. So that's just a personal thing for me. Yeah. And of course, Mimil, obviously, the, he's a bear. He is the bear. He's the music. He's the music. Uh, the music, man. I yes. know you just. He just. I, I know how much he loves music. I've seen how much time he spends doing that. So yeah. I appreciate and, that. Yeah. I'm and Roxy's just a trickster. I just put it as a trickster. If you know, oh, that I don't know Roxy. Roxy. No, it's not even on the list. He just put it. Oh, on I there. know. I know. It wasn't on the list, but I know Roxy. <laughs> I right, need so to do it for Roxy. Let's, let's go down here. What uh, you got, Mike? Oh, me? Yeah. Email. Okay. Well, what you got? I chose the Dark Knight as well. For me? For you? Oh, cool. I chose Dark Knight for Cleo. Wait, wait. Why? Why did you choose the Dark Knight for him? Oh, you, who are you? No, for, for oh, him? Yeah. Hey, Kenny said the same thing. He loves Batman, and he's a dark knight. He is going to do what needs to get done for, like, loyalty, bro. He's okay. loyalty, and if he's going to get dirty for it, he's going to do whatever needs to get done. He's godlike for that. Y'all are very nice him. to each other. Let's see yeah. how we Yeah, we don't yeah. have that whole sibling robbery between you and your twin. Yeah. Because, like, he's the hotter one than you. Like, we don't have that situation. Uh, and I mean, he, he I, does have hair. He and he has hair. hair. One. Okay, and I, I'm pretty sure doesn't he, beat you, doesn't he beat you in Smash? He does not. I could have sworn he beat you in he, something. He be beating the hell he out of you. He beat you in something. Yeah, that's fine. What else you got? So uh, well, for Kadeem, I put him as a fighter. The fighter? The fighter. Kadeem's a fighter. Yeah. He's gonna like. He ain't gonna. No one's gonna push him, bro. If you do, you gotta catch the fate. Period. That's what the Kadeem's <laughs> about. He's Kadeem can get these you hands. Want, you want you want close quarters combat? Look at him. Hey, man. <laughs> I love you, Kadeem, but you can get these hands. Yeah, literally. Here we uh, go. For Kalia, I put her as a gunslinger. She be shooting. The gunslinger? Yeah. She quick. She quick. You better be she was careful. So right. I looked over and she over here aiming at yeah, you. Yeah, literally, literally. It's the truth. And for Brendan, I put you as a hunter. The hunter? Yeah, because okay. you always looking for something. Always. Always. Yo, how crazy is that? There it always. is. Always. Yeah. You are. You are. And, oh. and, and you know, and that's a good thing because you want your reward. Okay. You want, you want your game. Yeah. I right. get you. I take it. I get that. And uh, for myself, I put myself as a spell blade because I do love magic, but you got to know how to be in the physical world, too. So you got to know how to balance the two. You know what I mean? So that's why I chose spell blade for myself. I love it. I love it. Great breakdown. Kalia, what you got for us? All right. So for Mr. Khalil Thomas over here, yeah. I put him as a spell blade. Whoa. Mostly because it's just like multi-talented, you know? You do balance you. a lot on Thank you. so many different levels. So Thank you. that's a good part of that, too. Uh, for Kadeem, aka Kathikius over there. Kathikius? Yes. Y'all don't y'all remember uh, Kathikius? Y'all doing this. Yeah. Y'all yeah. remember. If y'all yeah. had noticed, he you know, he's three years younger than me, yeah. but he's obviously the more brolic one. And he be, oh, he's been on his Twitch streams. Well, didn't you have like a Hoochie Daddy short stream? Yeah, hey, no, hey, we're not. Hey, oh, hey, no, bro. We haven't ran the Hoochie Daddy it's short in a minute. All right? We yeah. don't need to bring that up. There's a mass psychosis. Nobody saw it. It's I was scarred no. for life. Yeah. You're welcome, Brennan. It wasn't real. But for him, I did put him as a wizard because, sadly, I really think about things in a D&D &D way. And with the wizard class compared to any other spell class, they need to know every single spell specifically, and they need their spell book. Mm. But the fact that he's, like, such a hard worker in order to, like, keep all his resources together, keep all his tech together, and make it work, like, no matter what, I think that's what makes him, like, such a wizard with it. Got you. Thank you. Good breakdown. Thank you. Thank you. And then for... Mr. Mill Masters, Millie Mills. I did put him as a bard also. Everyone's like, going to call you the bard. Because it fits I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm 100% yes. fine with that. And the best thing about the D&D interpretation of the bard, it's very, very multi-talented because there's like a sword-based one. There's more that's like support only and stuff like that. So he always loves to fill in roles with, and when, whenever it's needed, especially in video games. So I think that fit him pretty well. Thank nice. you. I love that. Yeah. Great breakdown. Thank you. You got anything for Brennan? For Brennan, um, actually, I forgot to show that I kind of, I just felt like drawing them instead. Did you just draw him? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So, so this is the sorcerer Brennan? Yeah, so, you know, this is Brennan over there with the I see the sparkle. The bolt. The bolt. Is that bolt. the sparkle on there? Bolt. 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 Can we get the crowd to yell at us as well? <laughs> bolt. 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 I appreciate you guys bolt. enjoying my, my chosen haircut because this is shaved. <laughs> Thank you very much. A bit. You, you can't grow no, no. Okay, <laughs> Perfect. Um, I did have him as a sorcerer because it just comes from inside. All your skills, all your humor, all just everything about you comes from deep within. And you manifest that into real life. So mm. I think that's pretty dope. There it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Clap hey, it up. You want to go or you want me to go? You go. Go ahead, go ahead Brendan. Go ahead. Why you look? Why you looking, bro? Uh, no, I'm fine. I, well, I already well, you know. Laugh. You laugh. As Kadeem said, you pulling up some old shit. Let's go. Uh, All right, so look. No, we gonna start. Bring it back, bro. We gonna start with Kadeem. Oh, here we go. No, look, I see. 
the thing is, just because you're hating on me, all, this hate over here doesn't mean I'm hating on you. I said this brother's a mage because technology is an art that a lot of people, if you don't understand it, is magic. And this man pulls things together in a way I ain't never seen on a consistent basis. And he overkills a lot. You know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, what are we doing today? We just need a simple one, one camera stream. He'll show up with five cameras, four PlayStations, 11, 11 screens, and a bunch of questions. So you my never point know. Is, you, know? you never know. You never know. You never know. You stay ready. You don't have to get ready. Um, we're going to go down to Clea. What did I put for you? Uh, I can't even read my own. Oh, a summoner. Because you, the art that you create. And so for me, I've seen you create costumes. I've seen you create uh, characters. I've seen you all that. So you're summoning these great things on a consistent basis. And, I, and the thing is, I feel like you summon from a space of love. I've never seen you be anything but nice except for that drawing um, since I've met you. Um, so I wrote drawing. that before that. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, mill down, uh, me mill down there. I actually put you as the same thing as you put me. I put you as a hunter. Oh. Because ever since I've known you, you stay on a move. Mm. Like, you be in one spot. Like, even yesterday when you was on the panel, I was like, oh, he's right over there. And I look over there and you're gone. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm yeah. like, that's, assassin never gets seen. A hunter gets seen when they want to get seen. Mm. So I feel like you always looking for something. You always hunting for something. And I know them eyes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's something in there. You always hunting. I don't know what it is you be hunting for, but I know you're doing it. Oh, you cooked. Um, you so, cooked. Yeah, that's how we are I appreciate here. that. And so, uh, Roxy, uh, I put her as a concubine. And, <laughs> <laughs> and a thief. When she sees this. And a thief. Damn. Um, and I like and the point. a thief? And a thief. Oh. Because you can be both. Pity to petty. Real quick, huh? All I'm saying is, she, what petty. did she say for me again? Exactly. I got to hear, hear hers before I heard oh, anybody else's. Right. So uh, I don't even, I think that deserves like, no explanation. Like we'll leave that where it is. Um, for myself, I say I'm a, gun, I'm a gunslinger because I stay with a loaded clip. Anytime anybody got oh, yeah, something for is. me, I got something back. That's what I'm saying. Anytime you got it, I'm ready. And then for this man right here, if you watch our podcast, you'll know that there's a running joke going on of a stereotype that I've created for this man that he even can't argue with. Is that, that stereotype is that if he was to be reincarnated as who he is, he would be an Asian woman who, who is rich. Um, and so after seeing Blue-Eyed Samurai, I thought that you would fit as a samurai. Yeah, oh. I guess that too, yeah. Because you, you do the thing. You get everything done. True. You yeah. do it in a stylish way. True, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Like, I said the rest. There we are. I appreciate mm. that. We're out here. I appreciate honor. that. Breaker. I like that. Thank you, man. Thank you for Love that. and hate. Thank you, that, man. I, uh, very quickly, I put uh, Brennan as a monk. I put uh, Hamil as a beast master. I put Kadim as a warrior. No, excuse me. I put Hamil as the uh, as the bard. Oh, okay. And I put uh, Kalia as our. One more time. I had it right here. This is the one I saw. Her. Uh, the paladin. Yeah. You're the paladin of the whole team. She's there right. There it is, man. Clap it up for that segment of us getting a chance Woo! to break everything down one time. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you, man. So, uh. With the How to Nerd podcast, we like to talk about all things nerdy. So it could be from, from science, it could be all the way to animation styles, gaming, all the way through. So to give you guys a quick breakdown on today's topic, gaming psychology explores the various psychological aspects related to video games, including why people play games, the effects of gaming on mental health, the mechanisms behind gaming addiction, and how games can positively influence cognitive and social skills. This topic is particularly rich as it interacts with mental health, behavioral science, and the broader impact of gaming on individuals and society. Any uh, any psychologists, anyone studying psychology in the in the crowd? I'm yeah, cool. okay, I see you guys. Yeah, All right, y'all cool. better be raising your hands if we ask some questions. I love that. I love that. So this kind of conversation is right up their alley. They'll be able to like really take from I guess take from this kind of a uh, conversation we're going to have about it. So I would like to throw this to the panel very quickly. Um, have you ever used video games as a way to cope with stress or anxiety? and can you share that experience Brandon we're gonna start with you and then uh, we'll go to the four controllers okay. no definitely like gaming for me is my escape like I have been a gamer my whole life um, and the only time like the most difficult times in my life whenever anything doesn't things aren't lining up the way they need to um, then I go beat up on people on the internet you know what I'm saying or I get humbled you know what I'm saying you get online and you get humbled either yeah. way it's like a, a cathartic experience for me because I'm just like, I'm able to remove myself from whatever this world is and whatever's going on, put myself into a different world and either show up or sh show up and show out or get shown up. And regardless, it's, it ends in the same result for me that I'm able to reset, restart and get back to whatever I needed to with a fresh mind, you know, and fresh perspective. Love that. Clear? Personally for me, I do absolutely use gaming to cope. And one way forward is like, 
when life is like out of control and stuff, I usually like to play video games because at least with something, I am complete control of the character and I already know how the game works. So it's just a nice like stability with it to like really remind myself like what am I capable of. So having the control within a video game helps me, you know, pretty much lock back in and have nice, uh, uh, a nice like stable ground to go back on. All right, Kadima, what about you? Uh, of course, of course. Gaming is, uh, you know, I, I go through and just kind of collect games, uh, preserve games, things like that. And honestly, a lot of my time when it comes to gaming is almost just finding, uh, finding other games that I've never heard before. And it just, just helps me relax and kind of just, you know, um, see, see how much talent and see how much artwork and just games that people have never heard of that I really, that people have never even played before that I like really researching to, to see how much time and effort are put into video games like people don't know how much the development time and process is i feel like it's becoming a, more of a topic nowadays yeah for sure you know how long the how long development phase is. but games from even back in the day uh just just games with that 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 long credit list of just people that you have never heard of and games you've never heard of uh i just i just yeah i like like that side of it of escaping a little bit from that yeah got you what about you mike when it comes to gaming helping with social anxiety is your way to calm down is a way to reset talk to us um for me definitely a way for some alone time i suppose get to know yourself more like you can really use video games for a multitude of things just like everything else uh, you can like figure out what kind of role you are you can figure out like what's your strengths what's your weaknesses you can definitely do a lot with that when it comes to like stress or anxiety or like that there's some people that rage at games people get literally views for raging at video games oh you yes oh yeah i you too? I, yeah, okay, I, cool. Yo, I've seen this man just rage quit Gears of War all the time, literally. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Look, it's no, the truth. No, all the, the truth. Time. I'm not no. sure. And, Family and, secrets and, up okay, here. Relax. Xbox, Xbox 360 days, maybe. Okay, cool. Yeah, those days. Not, but he, he grew, and now he knows not to. He knows how to deal with these. He knows how to deal with that and beat people up all the time. So he's good at that. But yeah, um, when it comes to anything like to help myself, it's just my alone time. It's just what I'm doing, and I don't really... Yeah, there's not much to it. When it comes to me and my journey of gaming, right, like every set I've ever worked on, I always had a console with me. Like when I did holes, I went to the Walmart and I bought the pop-up uh, PS1 with the flip, the flip-up screen. Like my first per diem check, I walked right into Walmart and bought that. When I was doing roll bounce, me and Bao, all we did was play NBA Live and Madden against each other every single day on who, set. Who was better though? Uh, it was about even. Okay. It was about even on that one, for sure, for sure, because he couldn't see me in the fighting games. Allegedly. Ever. Alle hey, 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 Allegedly. Hey. Wow. First of all, there's a picture in mom's in mom's living room. You're like nine months old, so you weren't even alive when we was really doing this. Yeah. She, she, she walked. Not she walked during roll bounce. Let's she talk about walked. that. I, I actually helped her walk. Her first steps were actually during roll bounce. Yes. yes. So that's how young she was. She could barely yeah. even walk. Yeah. So next question to the board: uh, Can you describe a time when you felt a strong emotional response to a game, whether positive or negative? Brennan, we'll start with you. Yeah, I'll start. Um, obviously, I've had a lot. I'm going to give you two real quick ones. Okay. Um, the first one is the most connected I've ever felt to a game. The first time I ever felt like I was like, whoa, I'm a part of this was when I played Bioshock the first time. Hey, Bioshock. Anybody uh, played Bioshock before? Great game. Yeah, y'all know what game. I'm talking about? It's like playing a movie. Great game. Um, it stands yeah. up, too. So if anybody hasn't played it, I highly recommend as a classic game, go back and try it. And the second one is the Rage Quitting. The most upset and angry I've ever been playing a video game was when I played Ninja Gaiden. Anybody yeah. know that game? Which one, though? Which one? Black. Uh, Xbox? On the 360. Oh, you got, you got work by that? What? The Judgment? Trash. What do you mean trash? Wow. trash. Did you beat that game? All three. Well, the thing is, look, I don't pl I play com like directly competitive games. Yeah. So like, if you want to play some fighting games with me, let's do it. But against a computer that has Here way more powers than you and can do all that kind of stuff, 3D and 2D, like Ninja Gaiden upset me on a level that I hadn't experienced before because I'm like, there's no way to beat this. And it's like they made something that's impossible, and I hated it. There was. Yeah. I promise you, there was. No, I was very <laughs> mad. I, there was a way. <laughs> what about you, Kadima? Uh, uh, I'm gonna go negative first, actually. Yeah. Um, this game called Darkest Dungeon 2, which just came out recently. It's a newer, newer uh, RPG. You get a. It's actually class based, kind of like you know what we did earlier with all the roles and stuff like that. Um, I um I got to a level. I, I mean, we played RPGs our whole, damn near our whole life different type of RPGs. This one had this whole DPS check, which I've never heard of before in my life. And the thing about this game, it was a roguelike. So you start over every time you, you know, you lose. I put two hours into this, this, this run and get sent all the way back. And I kept getting to this one boss that I didn't understand what the hell was going on. I didn't. And I eventually beat it. 
But it, it literally, I just, I literally stopped playing the game after that. Like, I was so upset about not understanding this one part of it. I don't think I'm ever going back and beating it. I don't, I don't know why that game. And it made me actually go work out, yeah. actually. The game broke me and made, made me go work out. I don't know what it was. I couldn't <laughs> tell you what happened. I promised I'm going to beat that boss. I was like, I'm going to the gym. Yeah. So I'm you going lose to the gym. in the game, and you're like, I get my stats up and roll. I'm getting my I'm stats up and roll. That's exactly what happened. I lit and I started working on like six days a week after. I couldn't tell you what happened. That's that was hilarious. a negative and positive flip on It was both. Game. It was literally, I guess it was both. You want to look at it that way. Yeah. Yeah, but that game broke me enough to be like, I'm going to stop uh, gaming I'll, for a little bit and just go work out. I want to get a showing of hands. Has anybody else ever been broken to buy a game that they had? Wait, hold on, hold on. I didn't even ask the question. I want to show hands. You've been broken by a game so bad you had to go get up your stats in real life. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What happens? Yeah. Okay, it wasn't only me. Uninspiring. That's what I'm saying. It that's wasn't only me. Okay, <laughs> okay, I thought I was the only one yeah. that that happened to. That's I, crazy. Yeah, I didn't know. I thought well, I was the only one. I just was depressed after Ninja Gaiden. I'd never beat it. <laughs> I just sat down. I was what? like, maybe I'm not good at life. Yeah, I mean, nah, you got to. Kalia, what beat about it. you, man? Uh, can you describe a time when you felt a strong emotional response to a game, whether positive or negative? Uh, I do a little bit of both. Uh, first, with the negative one, I was playing Kin Hearts 2 Final Mix again. Hey. Mars 2, love uh, it. Oh, yeah, I see the, look, we got a Keyblade right there. Hey, hey what up? Hey, hey we good. We got the Oblivion one, nice. Uh, also, correction, it was Birth by Sleep, but um, so I was playing it, and I was going against Zigbar within the Birth by Sleep uh, gameplay. So, and I was playing Aqua, and Aqua within the game, she's broken. You know, she can do backflips, she has the best agility, and her stats are crazy. But the thing with Zigbar, he has that stupid teleport move where he would just go back and forth while being on the ceiling, which is, which is an open air level. So I don't know how that works, but he's also teleporting and shooting you at the same time. It's like, I have a sword and I'm a gymnast. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> so I finally, finally beat him. And just the relief I felt from it was great. But just the headache I got. I was literally throwing controllers, had to like sit in the bed for a little bit, pick it back up again and go back into yeah. it. Yeah. So that was my negative one. But a positive one was uh, I, I, I had a, a kind of tough time in middle school and I wasn't gaming like at all. So uh, eventually like one night I just really wanted to relax. And I haven't played Skyrim in so, so long. Skyrim is one of Skyrim, my favorite games. Skyrim, any Skyrim fans? Any Skyrim fans? Skyrim, okay, yes. So, man. Uh, Your taste Y'all play, y'all play everything. I like it. Hey. But uh, yeah, so I started to play. I started to play the music from the soundtrack of the game, and I just started bawling my eyes out. It just felt like listening to a second home, you know. So it was positive for me because I, I could just imagine like the artists and the musicians and all the designers of the game can make a game feel so so real and like so full that it can make that connection to somebody. So I think that's just the beauty of gaming and art and game development that they can make that connection with people. Love it. Love the breakdown. Mike, what about you? Um, I'll, start with the neg I'll start with the negative. Uh, definitely when it comes to online games, when there's ranks, if you're like, oh, what rank are you? You gold? Oh, you bronze? You're trashed here. Like, I, that's what was negative for me because everyone tries to be like, oh, I'm not good enough for that rank. But then after I got past that and I learned how to actually increase my rank, it made me, it turned to positive. It turned to like how to actually improve yourself how to actually get up the tiers. And um, definitely another positive thing was when I played Cyberpunk, when you can like choose your life path and choose how you really want to get things done. That was, that's, that's where it was for me. For sure, for sure. Great break. The, about the Cyberpunk like resurgence. I know. Crazy. Is, yeah. yeah. Apparently, them two down there have put a lot of time. They yeah. love that game, actually. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta Thank you, Edge Runners. It, so. Thank hey, you, Lucy. Lucy and Strive. Got you, got you. Yeah. Next question for the, for the panel very quickly. As a gamer, have you noticed any differences in how uh, different genders are treated or represented in the gaming community? Uh, I, I would love to just even lead this one off very quickly to tell a quick story. My little sister being the youngest of three older brothers, right? So she, she's already going to be rough and tumble for sure. But I'll never forget we were at a mall in L.A. We were at Fox Hills Mall, and the brand new Smash Bros. was getting ready to come out. Let's and go. They, they had a little, uh, a little kiosk in the middle there. And Kalia goes and picks up the controller, and she's playing. She beats me. She beats Hamil. She beats Kadeem. And then some other kid, you know, you got to pass the controller along. The kid sits there. He picks up the controller, and he looks at my little sister, and he's like, <laughs> and I just like, now as an older brother, I want to knock his head clean off his shoulders. But I knew... Kalia's about to beat the holy hell out of this kid. Three stock the kid. Make some noise for the, the three stock one time. 
Oh, she's actually a beast at Smash. It's she's crazy. an absolute she's beast. Crazy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I had to tell that quick story as far as representation when it comes to being a woman in, in, in this space and, and being a gamer and having all these different interests of life. Kalia, what about you? How does it feel to be a woman in this space? So, for me, secretly, like, being into gaming since I was, uh, like, the littlest of girls, I remember, like, I've been playing games more than I do playing with dolls, you know? So, I think, personally, for me, it secretly kind of felt isolating growing up because you don't know if all the other girls have that connection with you. And then you can't really play online, especially with my age. Like, I was playing Destiny 2 when I was, like, probably, like, 10 to 13. And Fantasy Star Universe. Hmm? Fantasy Star Universe. Yes, I was playing Fantasy Star Universe when I was, like, 8 years old. Yeah, and, like, yeah. these are all multi multiplayer games. But I knew I can't go far in the game because who wants to play with a little girl in a video game, you know? So that's for, like, my own protection and also for other people. It would just be weird. So it is an isolating experience previously, but I do love that there's been, like, steps and bounds within game development, the gaming industry, and this video games itself to make it, like, more inclusive and just more fun for women in gaming and just making that space. So, yeah, it started off isolating, but, you know, we're all starting to see each other more, so I'm happy about that. Absolutely love oh, yeah. it. What about you, Brennan? I wanted to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Um, since we're talking about the gender and the gaming thing, is that's something I've always wondered, is do you feel that games are more designed for boys and men than they are for women, considering just the discrepancy in how many boys and men play video games versus women? Like, how do you feel about that? I mean, that's the thing, because like, when you ask something like, oh, how is it that you feel like it's designed for women? It's like, what does that mean, really? Because like, like, for design women, like, does it mean it's just more pink? Is it easier gameplay? Is it you Ooh, know, easier stuff like legit? Well, I mean, that's, so like that's, and the reason, that's actually why I wanted to explore it, because I wonder, it's just like, why isn't it as appetizing for women? You know, for example, like you just said, you felt like isolated or alone in that space, and it's just like, well, I know there's a lot of female gamers out here, you know what I'm saying? We're doing it because that's where we are. But me growing up, you know, it's just like every time I'm like, I'm going to play somebody or there's video games to play, it's always the fellas. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're doing the land parties. It's the guys. You know what I'm saying? And I've always wanted women to come and play. I'm like, you want to come play? And they're always like, nah, I'm okay. So I always wonder, it's like, is there a barrier there? Or is it just because it's always been the guys, you know? Yeah. I think it is just like, just a more emotional barrier and like this society bar barrier to it of just like worrying about being in that space with a bunch of dudes that's playing a game. It's like, then you got to deal with the whole weight on you. It's like, oh, so if you're losing the game, it's because you're a chick, you know? Like, that's the hardest weight it is when it comes to any multiplayer thing. So, like, I'm sure even, like, with esports in general, it's, like, I'm sure there's a crazy amount of women gamers that, like, are, go hard, but they would never, ever step on the stage because they, they don't want to deal with this, what would happen if that happens, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think with the whole barrier between it, I don't think they're... I don't think it's really designed for men or boys in general. I think we're just a lot more secretive about whether or not we like it. So okay. I think well, it's always been into it. I'd like to actually, if you guys are open to it, I'd like to uh, ask did anybody, or any ladies in the audience have anything to add to that? Just like, hey, like, uh, we got to answer, we got to right over here. I just want to know, like, what your experiences in gaming and like why you think it is the way it is. Um, my experience with gaming, we have to deal with a lot of gatekeepers. When it comes to gaming, cosplay, anything nerdy, um, I've experienced being a girl gamer and having someone who didn't take heed to my abilities. And when I did win, it was, oh, you just won by proxy because you're a girl, we went easy on you. And I'm just like, but I actually play the game. Yeah, so. okay. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Yeah, yeah, we have one more. One more over there. Clap it up for Hippie, our producer, making sure to run the mic around. Really hey, thank you, thank you Hippie. Shout out to Hippie. Thank you, Hippie. I don't know. Uh, I think we take a lot of disrespect when we're playing, especially on, in online games. They, they really just say, like, oh, you, like, as soon as we start the game, it's already like, oh, GG, we have a woman. Uh, we we lost that game, whatever. And... I hate, like, for example, I hate talking online because it's only two ways. It's always like you lost, we lost because we have you, or oh, go, you belong to the kitchen, go make me a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. <laughs> There's always also the guys that always go to really 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 disrespectful like 
you deserve to be our world. Mm. You you don't belong here. Yes. You are. It's it's tiring. Yeah. It's really really tiring just being a woman playing game. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I was really. Yeah, it's always it's it's really the community if you really think about it, cause that's what that's where it starts from. Because like we if we're all gamers, bro. We really all love games. We're all here because video games and anime. Like we can all connect through that. Just because there's one thing that separates us doesn't mean we have to just like start treating each other differently. Like I know when you remember we playing Overwatch one time. You act, I think mom remembers it. Where's mom at? She's somewhere in here. Where's but our mom? You right remember now. that time? Where's mom? You remember? Hi, mom. You're, you're, hey, mama. Do you hey, remember mama. one time she, you, we had something that happened on Overwatch, and you actually were very affected by it because like someone was just talking crazy. But that's just a community-based thing. It's not not really like the gaming industry itself. Maybe like on the inside, maybe. But like we as a community have to make it safe for everyone. That's the, really the goal here when it comes to females in gaming. Yep. And, and I just, that. Go ahead. I just wanted to say this. Um, you know, I thank thankful for having Kalia as the youngest out of all of us has always shown me, even at a young age, that, you know, yeah, we put control in Kalia's hands at, at a very young age, and she was able to compete and play at a high level. So me personally, I never, have, I just never have seen that disparity of, the, of, a, of a talent or skill from when it comes to guys or girls or anything like that. So that's just something that I've always loved about having Kalia in my life like that. Not saying it would have mattered, but I know at a young age, seeing Kalia play Skyrim and modding the games and, and, and uh, just Smash and everything else like that, she's played with us over the years. So hell, she was great at Gears of War, still is. So Splatoon? yeah, I just, we just never really had to have that type of mindset in our household. It just never really was, was part of our lives. I know it's out there, though. I know it does exist, and I'm sorry for So, for yeah, I think society. it's really based on a community-based thing. And yeah. I, like Hamil touched on, it really is about us as a generation being able to be more inclusive and accepting and bringing everyone to the table to enjoy what we love, which is gaming and having a good time about it all. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Um, next question I want to ask you guys was in, um, in regards to, can you share a story about a meaningful relationship or connection that you made through gaming? I, can I start this one off? Very quickly, man. Uh, the fact that I get a chance to be here at DreamCon with my family, I get my two brothers, my little sister as the four controllers. We just launched our entire content pages throughout throughout all of it. It's four controllers with a K, by the way. Make some noise for it. You can. Woo. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's the four controllers with a K. So you got Cleo, you got Kadeem, you got Hamil, you got Kalia. And that really is our pastime. We, we love talking anime. We love talking uh, movies and cartoons and gaming. And we spend a lot of time doing that is that's my most meaningful connection is really with my family. I played Mortal Kombat against Kadeem every single day. Him as Scorpion and me as Sub-Zero, and we just beat each other up for years. Yeah. About he, got, he has me now, but, you know, uh -huh. he puts a lot more time into it now. Can oh, yeah, no. Yeah, let now, me help now, you, now, Kadeem. Now it used to be 50-50, not anymore, though. Not let me you. help you, Kadeem. I know. We'll <laughs> Please. Come back. We'll I got come you, back. I'll, bro. Get him, I'll get him the next run. We'll kind of reaching you. You got Takeda. I know now. Now, now, now he just came out. With Hamil, I remember playing games like Gears of War and uh, Dead Space on the Xbox 360. With Kali, I remember connecting with her over Kingdom Hearts, which is like everything to me because it's you know it's a Disney-based game. We got Kingdom Hearts 4 getting ready to come out. Hopefully, the four controllers get a cameo in that as well. That'd be really cool if they can make that happen. It's like Absolutely. finally, Zero can you know Zero from Holes can have a, a an actual world in Kingdom Hearts. I think that would be really cool. So that's my my personal story when it comes to the connection with gaming, my family. And I get a chance to here we are in 2024, bring everyone to the table and come to DreamCon and do something like this. So yeah, man, that's my story. Anyone, uh, let's start with Hamil, what about you? So a connection I made was with my friend that I found through League of Legends and any league players? Any league players? Any league no, players? No, league, league, league. You guys league, play league. everything. Yeah, y'all, that's a squad right there. We got a wow. game up. We got a game over there. We got to get oh, you two. Okay. over there. Okay, cool. Okay, so I met. I so I've been friends with this uh, kid named Jet. Shout out Jet, Hotspot GG, uh, Jetty Boy. Uh, I've been friends with him since middle school, man, and I finally got to meet him this year. So it's been like 10, 12 years. I, I, I met him at Evo. He's a great guy. He's always been there for me. He's always a great guy to talk to. And uh, he's all the way from Atlanta. If anyone's from Atlanta, that's where he's from. And I would like, I've never thought I would be able to meet someone online, meet them in real life, and like have a connection like that. He's really like, that's my home dog. You know what I mean? Like, when. When it's all said and done, like I feel like that's one of my best friends I've ever had, for real. So all I really love him. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's dope, brother. That's dope. Kalia, what about you? Uh, personally, like for like long-term connections, he's definitely been with my brothers and stuff. But even for me, just when I'm playing like any team-based shooter games or just any multiplayer games in general, it's like 
it's just always like that's the way that people can connect to each other with no voice chat, no nothing, just like emails in the game or like saying hello to each other in the game or even like in Minecraft doing the little crouches and stuff. Yeah, no, exactly <laughs> like that. That's so weird. so I, like the fact that there's that's that little sign of like I guess humanity and, connect, and connection is such in a game that's just a bunch of zeros and ones. Like the fact that we're able to like have that connection no matter what. I think that's like probably my favorite thing about connectivity in gaming for me. Brandon, what about you, brother? Well, I mean, the, the reason I'm so good at Super Smash Brothers is because... Oh, my is God. Because, oh, my God. Is because I have a twin brother. Oh. Mm. Who, okay, so save. I have a twin good brother, save. Save. and that's one of our biggest connections. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Like, before you could even play Smash online, we're playing Melee. You know what I'm saying? We're playing Brawl. I'm like, it's just one-on-one, -on -one, yep. Final Destination, 10 hours. Omega you know what I'm saying? Up. I get it. What, it. what is it? Who is the stronger human being today? <laughs> and it's like, that's why I'm so good is because most people... I think a lot of people don't have that. They don't have their equal to be able to play against and sharpen, you know, steel sharpen steel. And then on the other side of it, like right now, I play like Call of Duty, and I'm not good at it. But I only play it because my little cousins play it. So I jump on, and that's how I stay connected with them. You know, there's a 15, 20 year difference between us sometimes, and there's nothing else we can really talk about. But you know, we're going after the loadout, and another team is pushing. You know what I'm saying? We're on the same accord. We're we're one. And so for me to be able to be connected with people that I normally wouldn't have a direct reason outside of, oh, you're my cousin, it's good to see you, you're good in school, and that's all you could say. You know, it's like, nah, like, we, we on this tomorrow? Like, all right, cool, I'm just gonna follow your lead, bro. We out here. Yeah, so. Got you. For me personally, um, you know, uh, growing up, we didn't really play online that much, to be fair. You know what I mean? Obviously, we had each other, as, of course, the four controllers, we had each other. So we played uh, against each other a lot. And I will say, before the last four years, obviously, when COVID started, uh, getting on Twitch, playing a lot more online multiplayer games with a lot of the community that's here. I see y'all. See y'all right yeah, there. Shout out to everybody been supporting from the see main to the Twitch. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah. So, um, starting with, with everyone that's in the community that we have here, and uh, it, it for sure opened my eyes to being able to connect with people that way. And it's, you know, I'm, I get, I'm not the biggest, I have never really been a big shooter when it comes to that. I'm um, not a big FPS guy or anything else like that. But yeah, we have found ways to connect and play a lot of games over the years uh, together as a community. Um, so I, I, I see the value of it a lot, a lot more, especially in the last four years, for sure. Got you. Great breakdown, man. My, my question for, for you guys before I guess we can get into Q&A, I guess, from the crowd. Uh, is this one. How do you balance gaming with other activities to ensure it remains a beneficial hobby? Because there are some people out there who are really like, addicted just to gaming. That's all it is for them. Like that's their, that's, that's their livelihood, that's their lifeblood, that's their source of entertainment, and that's all they get is just that. So I think finding a balance in life is very important. So I would love to ask the, the panel, how do you guys find a balance between what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and also you know, playing with us or online with other people? I don't, I don't even try. You don't even try? <laughs> no, I don't try at all. Well, I mean, because the thing is, like, you know, I have a child. Like, I have a company I run. I have so many obligations of things that I have to do. Yeah. Gaming is not a thing that I get to have to do anymore. Yeah. So, for me, I'm just like, I just game whenever I can. I don't try to balance it. I'm just like, oh, I can game right now? I got a few minutes, then I'm in. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, I don't even try to do it. I just, like, I get in where I can fit in and play as much as I can because I always, like I said before, I always feel like I'm a better, I'm better afterwards. Like I'm just like be able to move, move myself, come back, and I'm good. So I think sometimes you have to look for balance, and sometimes balance finds you. Ooh, what I was saying. Ooh, bars. Ooh, Ooh. bars. Yes. I, Finger snaps to that, Brennan. <laughs> that was so deep. I love that. Um, Camille, what up, brother? For me, it's it's however like you game. Like if you're just like trying to game for some peace, if you're trying to game to like use it as a workout and get better at a game, like it's just. It depends on like what you're gaming for. That's how you really fit into your schedule. If it's like, hey, it's the end of the day, I'm gonna get some rounds on uh, on COD or Val. If it's like, hey, I just got back home from work, I'm about to like get some ranked in in uh, Tekken or Street Fighter. If uh, hey, I want to get creative, let's go on Minecraft. Is this whatever you feel like doing? And you know, it might. It's just who you are as a gamer. Every gamer is different. There's cozy gamers as well. Like just cozy how, gaming. I have to pick that up. I like cozy gaming now. Yeah, me too. You Originally, should. I didn't like it, but I was like, oh. It's relaxing. It is. I get it now. You, you should start Animal Crossing. Yeah. You should. I should. I really should. You should. You need a village. Yeah. Kalia, okay, what yeah. about you? For me, when it comes to balance and like gaming and like life in general, it's usually a bit tougher because I like single player games and those games on average are becoming like hundreds of hours just because and it's like, why? So for me personally, it's just, I would like to have this like, a little handful of games I had to shuffle through and just 
if I had one of those days where I was like, I want to get through this specific chunk in a game no matter what, that will be my focus for like the entire week. And then afterwards, if I get bored of one game or just I'm getting way too irritated, I know there's like a brain-dead multiplayer game that I can play and just relax after, you know? So it's just having your, your easy game to decide if you just want to relax and then having your, your backlog game just chipping through it slowly but surely. That's how I do it. Gotcha. What about you, Kadeem? Uh, gaming addiction, right? That's gaming right. addiction is yeah. the question. Because I feel like if there was anybody up here who's a recovering I, gaming I, addict. I go through my phases. <laughs> I go through my phases. I'm Relapse every two I'm weeks? Re I'm recovering. I'm re <laughs> recovering. You never, that's the thing. You're never recovered <laughs> about addiction, so you know this. This is actually true. true. This is true. Always recovering. Uh, no, but uh, when it comes to gaming addiction uh, or just anything like that, you, you have to, of course, find your balance, find... How to even break the cycle of certain things, of certain games and stuff like that. Finding, finding like I said, a, di a different outlet. Uh, trying to find whatever, I guess, whatever <laughs> neurological compound that, that dopamine or whatever the case is. You know, I'm getting real technical out here. So where's the psychologist out here? That, that's, is, he, is he on yeah. board? Is he on track? Yeah, what are we yeah. talking about? Thank you. All right, cool. cool. Okay, okay, I'll keep going. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, but it, it for sure is on that side of it. Uh, finding some, some another way and another means to either find that that outlet, either it's in a positive source. And, of course, gaming, we're out here, positivity of gaming. There is a lot of positivity in gaming. So, you know, it's not always in that negative sense. Just kind of finding that balance and... And of course, having a healthier lifestyle with it, you know. Whether I've, I've done this a few times, it's actually, it's actually a true story. When I was in high school playing Kingdom Hearts 2, um, I would whenever time I leveled up Sora, right, 20 push-ups. Swear, swear to God, did that for a whole summer. What? Every swear, time you would level one. up Sora, yes. you'd hit 20 push-ups. 20 push-ups. Wait, every time Especially, what? Huh? Every time you what with Sora? Every, level up. Every, level up. up. Every time I got to level up with what? Sora. Oh, yeah. Oh, you but, leveled up in real life. I always level up a little. Again, oh. I don't know what it is. But okay. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a, again, recovering. Recovering. <laughs> recovering. So Gaming. now I get what happened. Here I am coming from set, and I come back, and my brother's like, what's up, bro? Like, what? What's, Hold up. I, I, I'll never, it was a symbol level, too. It was when you, when you turn into a lion. It was that level. That's a spam oh, ass level. Was, I, I was spamming. Hey, I was leveling up like crazy, yeah, bro. It's so fun, too. Now yeah, I that's, know. that's the, so. The, yes, okay. that's what I'm saying. Yep. Finding ways to help, have a healthy lifestyle uh, with it. All right, so guys, um, we're about to wrap it up. We're gonna do a little bit of Q and A real quick, so we have a few minutes left. Before we do that, though. I want to let you guys know when we're done today, um, we really want to say thank you guys so much for being here. Um, we really appreciate you. And our producer, Hippie, has some merch for you guys. First come, first serve. She got some buttons and some backpacks and stuff. So make sure you follow the How to Nerd podcast and all that. Um, so I just want to say that before we get into it. And then, um, Hippie, we're going to say, does anybody have any questions for our panel um, real quick before we head out of here? So uh, I think the yellow back there was first. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Um, my question is, how has gaming helped you, like, achieve, like, push more on your personal goals? Like, for me, I'm a musician, but I learned how to be a musician, the rhythm and stuff, by playing JSRF. And so, like, stuff like that, how has gaming helped you be, like, more of who you really want to be in life? All right, and so, panelists, uh, we only have a few minutes left, so our answers have to be very, very short. So, Cleo, go ahead. When you say JSR, are you talking about Jet Set Radio Future? An incredible soundtrack to a game, by the way. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, one, of the, one of the games that was most challenging to me was uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, because I got lost several times and restarting that game over and over and over again. And then once I actually like, stopped everything else and focused on, okay, what did I miss? It helped me understand problem solving so much better. It's like the, you have to take a minute to just stop breathe and understand what you missed in order to go ahead and, and find the next level. So Castlevania Symphony of the Night did that for me in life. Um, Super Smash Brothers helped me with my timing and anticipation in playing basketball when I was an athlete. Smart. Uh, brain age, DS, uh, mathematic, mathematics. Oh, yeah. You don't know about that brain age life? Yeah, I mean, I do. I, I, okay, yeah. Well, oh, what's yeah. About that time's what's your brain age, seconds, Brandon? Baby. Was, like, 20 Brandon, seconds. What's, your brain, what's your brain age? My brain age? Yeah. It was the same. It was like always like two years old. See it from the back of your head. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it from the back of your head right now. Kalia? Uh, Nobody likes you. Uh, <laughs> well, you won't have to see me after this. <laughs> uh, for me, um, it helped me with like, actually as a kid, it actually taught me how to read for some reason. Like, um, I was playing Pokemon Fire Red, and when you, of course, when you get a Pokemon, it will ask you like, hey, nickname the Pokemon. That I can't spell yet, so then I'll ask my brothers, like, okay, what did I put there? Then it's like, oh yeah, just type out uh, the name of the Pokemon, and then Aww. boom. So, yeah, gaming, gaming kind of helps you with just um, any this anything with the 
uh, literature, stuff like that. So that's how it's helped. I, I just want to point out real quick, I, I normally don't feel old, but you've been doing that to me today. Yeah. <laughs> Fire red, yeah. bro. Good Lord. Fire red. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, oh, for me, it's Tekken. Tekken really taught me the confidence, bro. You got to know if you got to fade, you got to fade. And it really, that's how it be. Uh, Tekken definitely made me like, there's a story when I had to fight you two. And it was back to back like five times in a row. And ever since then, I've been great. So like, He yeah. smoked me and Kadeem both five times in a row. I yeah. want the smoke. What's the next question? Yeah. <laughs> Last question? Yeah, last question. Uh, last question, we got two minutes. So this question, answer a wrap. All right. It's just a compliment. I just want to say thank y'all for showing up. So Cleo, you brought your family. I saw you in 2022, seeing everything that you're doing as far as MC and Kadeem. You said you was going to be bad boss, so I'll be watching your streams as always. Metal Gear, I want to thank you all because you're showing that there's a community that you can bring your family into it, that you can do it all together, and that you have all differences, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to dislike each other. So. Shout out to you because each year you've been coming to DreamCon, you've had the patience to say hello to everybody, take pictures. I wanted to just to say I appreciate all y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. Hope to see y'all again. Hope to continue to see y'all grow. So thank y'all. And I'll try to get a picture with y'all as a family once y'all off stage. But just thank y'all, seriously, for all the patience that y'all just do each and every year. Thank you, man. Thank it you, means man. A lot, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for sitting here with us uh, and joining us on the How to Nerd Live podcast with the guests of the four controllers. Big foes in the air. Big foes in the air. Big foes in the air. Uh, you guys can make sure to find us on the How to Nerd podcast on everything at How to Nerd podcast. Season two will be dropping soon. We have amazing guests on this season. We've got King Vader, Kiara, please, and even Walter Jones. Of course, which many of you know, Walter Jones is the uh, Black Power Ranger. That was crazy. I still can't believe he's that on That happened. It wasn't even supposed to happen. But it did. Surprise so guest. Pat well. Cloud. Pat Cloud Cloud is on it as well. And also, make sure you guys follow the four controllers. That's four controllers with a K, by the way, on all social media platforms. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You. Thank you guys for rolling through. Big thank you to DreamCon for letting me come and be a part of this every single year. It only gets bigger and better, and I'm excited already for next year. Thank you guys for rocking with us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Enjoy guys. Like we said, if you want the uh, merch, go to a talk to Hippie right here. She got free merch for y'all. In the Tanjiro. <laughs>